So in today's lesson, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, trial KEQ, and this is an extension uh, of the equilibrium calculations we've been doing so far. You'll remember that that K represents our equilibrium constant, um, but what we may not understand at this point is what trial K means. So I'm going to start with getting you a bit warmed up with this. So uh, what I've got here is an ice box. And so you'll probably uh, recognize that the questions that we've done so far, um, with respect to the initial concentrations, all of the questions that we've seen have had initial concentrations of reactants, and we've assumed that the product concentrations are zero. However, in an equilibrium system, we may be observing that equilibrium system at any point during the shift. And so it's possible and plausible that there may in fact be circumstances where uh, we don't know the position of the equilibrium, uh, but we do know that there is an existing concentration of product. So that is precisely what we're going to see in today's questions. So uh, what is trial K? Well, Trial K is found by substituting in given concentrations into the equilibrium law. So typically when we look at equilibrium law, we're talking about our K equilibrium, our equilibrium constant, being equal to the concentration of our equilibrium concentrations uh, of reactants divided by those of our products raised to the coefficient, uh, raised to the power of their coefficients. So we will you know, be explicit about telling you that if we're looking at equilibrium constants, that the concentrations we substitute into this equilibrium law must be equilibrium concentrations. However, when we perform a calculation that involves a, using a trial K, we're going to substitute in given concentrations, not equilibrium concentrations, and not necessarily equilibrium concentrations. And that will allow us to ascertain the position of the equilibrium at, uh, with those given concentrations. We're going to go through some calculations to help you see this and how this works. But what that's going to do is it's going to give us information about when we find that trial KEQ, its value will help us to determine um, where the equilibrium lies when we compare it to an actual known K value for that particular equilibrium system. Okay, it's important to know also that sometimes uh, trial K or trial KEQ is referred to as the reaction quotient and given the symbol Q, I believe that's what our textbook does. So just so that you're aware, those mean the same thing. So without further ado, let's go ahead and explore uh, a question that you might see in, uh, in, as you kind of work through these equilibrium questions. And so what we've got here is uh, a typical question that you might see that involves trial K. So let's read through it. It says, uh, for the equilibrium, uh, I've got some nitrogen and some hydrogen combining to make ammonia. That's a familiar reaction in this section. Um, and they're giving us a KEQ value of 0.29. Okay, so um, that gives us information about the relative amount of reactants and products at equilibrium. You'll remember that a KEQ value that is less than one tells us that the reaction is favoring our reactants, uh, but only slightly. Uh, let's read on. So initially, I have 0.5 moles of nitrogen gas, 0.5 moles of hydrogen gas, and 0.5 moles of ammonia gas in a one liter flask. So the fact that it's in a one liter flask gives us uh, these mole values uh, as, a, as a concentration value as well. And so the question says, in which direction will the equilibrium shift? Okay, so it's time for us to create an ice box. So if you wish, pause the video now and then create an ice box for yourself and then resume the video when you are ready. So I'm going to go ahead and create this ice box. I'm going to write the relevant reaction up at the top here. I've got N2 plus three H2s reacting to make two ammonias. And I know my, I'm just going to use some short forms here. I for initial concentration. 
uh, C for uh, change in concentration, and E for equilibrium concentration. Now, as of now, I can put in the 0 0.50 moles per liter of each of my reactants and products. And I know that each of them is going to change. But the reality is, is that at this point in time, I don't necessarily know, and this is what makes this question different than ones that we've done previously, is that I don't know for certain that my reactants are going to decrease and my products are going to increase in concentration. That I don't, I can't really say that, so I'm going to get rid of that actually. You know, another alternative is that I've already gone past equilibrium and that, um, you know, my the equilibrium is going to have to shift to the left to recreate my reactants. And in that case, I would have pluses and then a minus here. But at this point in time, uh, I really don't know which way it's going to shift, which is why I need to perform a trial K calculation. And so that's what I'm going to do. So let's go ahead and do that. So I know that, oops, I'm going to change the color of my pen here just to make life a little simpler. Um, all right, so I know that my trial K is going to be equal to the concentration of my product's concentration, the one that's given to me, raised to the power of their exponent. So ammonia has a coefficient, uh, raised to the power of their coefficient, rather. So ammonia in the balanced chemical equation has a 2 beside it. And then I have N2 times uh, H2. And so normally we would raise to the power of 3. So normally what we would do is we would have to get some sort of equilibrium expressions over here in order to, um, you know, plug that into the equilibrium law. But what makes this different is we're just getting a trial K. And so I'm actually just going to substitute in known values, uh, the given values. Uh, for each of these concentrations. And so I have 0 0.50 uh, for each of the concentrations. So I'm just going to go ahead and sub those in and get a value for my trial K. Okay. And I'm hoping you got the value 4.0. So now let's look at this situation. So I know that my K value for this reaction is 0.29, but my trial K was 4.0. What this tells me is that with the concentrations that we've used, that my equilibrium has gone, it's gone, these concentrations cause a shift that is far beyond the equilibrium point. I've gone beyond my actual K. So, no, so in other words, um, in order for this, this situation to reach equilibrium, I need it to shift back in the opposite direction. I've made too much product. It's gone too far. And so in, that, in this case, I've got to reduce the amount of my product by a certain amount, and I've got to increase the amount of my reactant. And again, remember that these values are going to be based on the coefficients in the balanced chemical equations. Okay, so, um, so again, just to reiterate, you know, therefore, because my trial K was greater than my actual K, the equilibrium shifts to the left. Okay, I have to kind of, it's gone beyond equilibrium at 4.0, so I need to shift back to undo it, to make it go backwards. I hope that that makes sense. Let's look at another question that you might get that might involve even more calculations. Okay, so let's look at the second example. It reads, uh, a three liter vessel is injected with nine moles of hydrogen gas, nine moles of iodine gas, and six moles of hydrogen iodide gas at a given temperature. The KEQ value is 0 0.020. So I'm going to just go ahead and write that out. So K is equal to 0 0.020. Uh, it says calculate 
the equilibrium concentrations of all species. Okay, and so I'm going to want to do that. So that's a little bit more involved than the last question. Uh, so always a good idea to start with creating an icebox. So I'm going to ask you to pause the video and to create your own icebox. And then when you're ready, resume the video and we will uh, take it up together. So just get it set up. You're not going to be able to complete it at this point, but just get it set up. So uh, setting up my ice box here, I'm going to go ICE, of course those are in concentrations in moles per liter. And I'm going to write out my reaction equation, 2HI reacts to make H2 plus I2. And uh, so my initial concentrations, I'm going to have to remember that I have 9 moles of iodine and hydrogen in 3 liters, so if I have 9 moles in three liters, that's going to give me three moles per liter. Of course, I'm going to put that in with the right number of sig figs here. So 3.00. Um, oops, and I put that in the wrong spot. So let me go ahead and fix that. So I've got uh, 3.00, 3.00, and then doing a similar calculation using the hydrogen iodide gas, I can see that I'm starting with 2.00 moles per liter of each. Now, we can't really judge just because I have a greater amount of my product present at equilibrium that it's, or present at the moment, that this is necessarily going to shift to the left. I, I don't, I can't really say that. And so at this point, I don't know whether I'm going to be putting in, you know, a, a my, this is going to go down and these two are going to go up or vice versa. And so in order to figure that out, I need to do a trial K calculation with the concentrations that are given. And so that's what I'm going to do. So if I'm calling this first, I'm going to call this step one, uh, is to just kind of set that up and, and realize that I need to do a trial K calculation. Then I'm going to call this next step, step two. Okay, so doing my trial K, I'm going to take um, the concentration of H2 uh, times the concentration of I2 divided by the concentration of HI squared. And I would, cons I would um, strongly suggest that you don't skip this step because I see students forgetting to put exponents in the right spots and so on and so forth. Uh, okay, and so I'm going to go ahead and substitute in the known values, and so I have 3.00 times 3.00 divided by 2.00 squared. And so, you know, 9 divided by 4 is uh, going to give me 2.25. Just double check that calculation. Uh, right, and so what I need to do at this point is I need to go back and I need to say, well, how does that trial K compare? to my actual K. Well, in this case, my actual K is a lot smaller. So the fact that this trial K right here, it's a trial K, happens to be much larger than uh, my actual K value for my equilibrium constant means that I've gone way beyond equilibrium with these uh, with the concentrations. And so this equilibrium is going to absolutely be shifting towards my reactants towards the left in this case, which means that as I complete my X, my ice box, I'm going to be reducing the concentration of my react my products and increasing the concentration of my reactants, which is a little bit of a shift from, <laughs> no pun intended, which is a bit of a shift from what we've done so far. So minus x, minus x, and then plus 2x. So now what I have, I right, have some uh, expressions for the equilibrium concentrations of each of my reactants and products in this situation. So 2.00 plus 2x. 3.00 minus x and 3.00 minus x. And, and so now I'm in a position where I can actually do some calculations, some equilibrium law calculations, and calculate and reach that goal of getting my equilibrium concentration of all species by solving for my unknown 
value of x here, right? x right here. Uh, and so solving for it once, we'll solve for it for all those cases, then I can substitute it back in. So I've got a little bit of work to do. And so uh, I've just created a little bit of space for myself. Uh, my third step is then, of course, our goal is to figure out the equilibrium concentrations of all the species. And so that means, again, like I said, solving for x here. And so I'm going to write out my equilibrium law. I know that K or KEQ is going to be equal again to the concentration of H2 divided by the concentration or multiplied by the concentration of I2 divided by the concentration of HI all squared. Uh, now though, because I'm trying to find equilibrium concentrations, I'm going to use the actual value of K, which was that 0.020. And I'm going to substitute in the expressions that I have just down here for equilibrium concentrations. So I have 3.00 minus x times 3.00 minus x over 2.00 plus x all squared. Uh, so I'm going to quickly rewrite this because, you know, you may be thinking, oh, here we go again with these quadratic equations, but um, we're going to, I'm going to remind you uh, that uh, there's some simplification we can do to avoid using the quadratic formula. Uh, so here we go, 0 0.020, and now I've got uh, 3.00 minus x, and I'm going to just kind of combine those. I've got two of the same um, binomials, so I'm going to write that as uh, 3.00 minus x all squared over 2.00 plus x all squared. Now, um, I'm hoping you see an easy out and an easy way to simplify this. I'm noticing that on the left side of this equation, I've got a value that can be square rooted. And I've also got expressions um, on the right hand side that are both squared, which means that they can be, uh, I can take the square root of it to simplify. So I'm going to take the square root of that and the square root of this, and then that will simplify my life. So I'm going to do exactly that. So square root, square root, and then rewrite this, and that will make it a linear equation. So I've got z uh, whatever the square root is of 0 0.020, and I'm going to figure that out in a second. Uh, but for now, I have 3.00 minus x divided by 2.00 plus x is equal to the square root of 0 0.020. Uh, and I'm getting uh, 0 point. Uh, one four ish. I've got a, a longer raw value that I'm going to include at this point, but I'm going to re re uh, remember my significant digit should be two because of that um, that KEQ value given. Uh, I'm going to skip to the next slide and then rewrite this and and go to solve from there. And you may want to pause the video. Let me just take a minute to absorb that. Okay, so I've got. 0 0.1414 is equal to 3.00 minus x over 2.00 plus x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole thing and I'm going to move it upstairs and then distribute this 0.1414. That's my plan. And then that leaves my 3.00 minus x over here. Uh, oops, I forgot a 2 here. So let's just make sure I wrote that in plus 2x. And I'm noticing on the last slide that I forgot that 2x. So I'm just going to go back and put that in. It should be there. You probably noticed it. Some, somebody probably noticed it. Uh, so let's go back here. Uh, and so now I'm ready to go ahead and solve this. Uh, I'm going to pause the video and just go through, and then just go through this and then uh, write it all out and then get, and then start the video again so that you can see my solution. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So, um, what I did was I, I distributed this uh, 0.1414 to both terms and uh, ended up with these values here. Uh, and then I took my constant terms and moved them to this and combined them on the same side of the equation, yielding this value. 
and then I move my minus 1x to the other side of the equation and combine my variable terms to give me a 1.2828. Again, I'm, I'm, you know, I've got some a longer values there. I've added some extra digits just to make sure I don't round prematurely. Uh, and then I go ahead and I solve for x, and I'm getting a value of 2.2. Uh, and so now I'm not done yet because if you'll remember, uh, this right here is a value in moles per liter and represents the unknown in my ice chart. So when I go back to the previous slide here, I need to go ahead and substitute in X to get each of these uh, concentrations. So that is the last, that's the final step that I have in uh, this process. Uh, so go ahead and calculate that for yourselves, and I'm going to come back with those calculated values as well. Okay, so let's just take a final look at these responses. So I know the expression for the concentration of hydrogen iodide it was uh, 2.00 plus 2x, and so substituting in the value we found for x there, um, and then accounting for significant digits. Okay, remember that when we add, we have the same number of decimal places in our response. So here I have one decimal, and this is two decimals, so I should have one decimal in my response. Uh, okay, and just performing the same analogous uh, substitution in for the concentration of my other of my products, uh, I substitute in the value for x, and that's going to give me 0 0.8. Now you may be wondering, well, that has one sig fig. Why two here and three here? Well, remember again, you know we're looking at decimal places when we're adding and subtracting. Uh, okay, and so I hope uh, that that makes sense to you. If you are struggling with any part of this. Um, then please reach out and I'll be happy to assist you in any way.